Hello sweet friends, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Each week I share kinda shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. Now in today's video we are going to be doing a few more spring inspired projects. We're going to be using a tuna can and a mason jar lid insert. We're also going to be using some scrap wood. Then we'll be using some air dry clay and molds to embellish all of our items. I made a printable for myself using some images from the Graphics Fairy. And if I can figure out how to make this a clickable PDF link for you, I will link this below. If I can't figure out how to do that, I will at least link the images that I've used so you can go and get those images for yourself. Finally, I'm going to be answering some questions that you've had regarding items that I use for storage in my craft room. So let's go ahead and get these projects started. For our first project here, we are going to be jazzing up some tuna cans. We're going to take our half round beads that I purchased off of Amazon and we are going to glue those to the bottom of our cans. I'll be using quick grip because this is usable on so many different surfaces. It's like super glue, but it doesn't stick to your fingers. It just washes right off. And press and hold. That's cute already. So while our glue sets up, we're going to be mixing up our paint. And I have the Waverly in the color plaster, and we're going to be using some baking soda. Your baking soda gives it a nice texture, and it's going to adhere better to those metal cans as well. I'm going to use two teaspoons of the baking soda, and I'm going to use three teaspoons of the paint. And we're going to stir that up and it looks very lumpy and clumpy at first. And now we're going to start painting our cans. And you can see it already gives such a nice texture to that paint. So while we're waiting for our paint to dry, we're going to go ahead and move on to our mold. I am using the Classic Elements. This is an Iron Orchid Designs mold. And I purchase all of my Iron Orchid Design products from Kimberly at My Victorian Heart. I'm going to use a little bit of cornstarch. That helps your mold to release the clay a little more easily. Take a little, warm it in your hands, make it a little more pliable, and squish it into your mold. Remove the excess as best you can with your finger. And then I like to use a Bondo spreader to make the back flat. I'll turn it over and roll it out. And do the same thing right here. And flatten it out. And roll it out. So I'm going to let these set up for about 45 minutes and then I'm going to glue them to my can. Now that these have set up long enough that I can touch them without squishing the image, I'm going to glue them onto my little tuna can. And I'm using my tight bond wood glue here. First I'm going to decide where I want them before I glue them down. So I just need a little bit of glue on the back. And we're going to glue them down and your glue is not going to set up right away, so you're going to be able to mess around with it a little bit. Put my other one down, and now I'm just going to gently push these down. So I'm going to take that same brush and just gently brush away that excess glue from around the image here. Because when you push it down, sometimes that glue does want to ooze out. And I'm just kind of dabbing the paint on the clay and not really brushing it because I want some texture. And that baking soda paint really helps to achieve that look. I think that turned out really cute. So we're just going to set this aside. And now I'll be decoupaging a similar design element to this can. So you can see our beautiful printable. And this is printed on tissue paper that I have taped down to cardstock. And when I put this through my printer, I take every other paper out and only send this through by itself. And the tissue paper that I use, I just pick up from Walmart. It's in the gift wrapping section. Also, 
Anytime I send mine through, you can see that there's this ink smear up at the top. My printer always does that, so whenever I am making printables for myself, I always make sure to put my images a little lower because I expect this to happen on my printer. And my printer is an inkjet printer, and you can see that that looks an awful lot like that. So that's what we're going to be putting on our other can. First thing you want to do is cut out as close to your image as possible to eliminate most of that white background paper. So I have all of my image cut out and we're going to apply that with some matte Mod Podge. So that looks good to me right there. Roll it over, apply a thin coat of our Mod Podge, start in the middle and work our way down. And the tissue paper just is so much easier to work with than the copy paper I was using last week. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Roll it over, thin coat of Mod Podge, start in the middle and work it down. And I'm gonna do a tiny thin coat across the top just to smooth everything down. I think that looks really similar. So while this is drying, we're gonna use some clear wax and some antiquing wax to bring out these details. So you always wanna start with your clear wax. I get a little bit on my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and just get in there working into the details. So I've coated my whole project. Now I'm coming back with a clean paper towel, and I'm just gonna dab off the excess of that clear wax. Now I'm coming back with the tiniest bit of that antiquing wax on a very small brush and I am going to dab off most of that. And now we're just going to work that over our project, making sure to really get into those recesses. And I like to work in sections so it doesn't dry down too much. Now I'm going to come back with a rag and just start wiping away excess. Now any area that you think has too much of that antiquing wax, dip it in your clear wax. It acts as an eraser. That way you control how much of that dark wax you want on your project. And I'll just be doing this other side the same way. So that is the finish that I prefer on mine. And I gotta say, that is one cute tuna can. And now that our image has dried with our Mod Podge, we're gonna wax this in the same fashion. So I'm satisfied with that look right there. You can see, you just can find some architectural images on Graphics Fairy, and you can Mod Podge those on there to give a similar look. Well, let me clean all of this up, and we'll move on to our next project. For our next couple of projects, I'm gonna need these to be base coated, and I'll be using the Rust-Oleum in Linen White. We're also going to need a butterfly for this project. You could use scrapbooking paper, but I am going to be using this decor mold. It's called Butterfly in Flight, and I got this off of Amazon, and it is a Prima redesign product. So I'll do the same thing. A Little bit of cornstarch, and now we're going to insert our clay into our mold. Pull off our excess clay, flatten the back as best we can, and release it from our mold. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it! The antenna stayed intact! That is literally the first time I've used these that that's ever happened. Yay! And it happened on camera! I'm gonna set this aside to dry, and I turn my clay every couple of hours so it will dry evenly, and that helps to eliminate cracking. For our scrap wood project, one of them will be using the molds, and to show a similar look, we will be using our printables. And I will need two of these for that project. So while our clay is drying, we are going to be making a tassel. We're actually using some cute pink and white yarn. I have a piece of cardboard here, and it is five and a half inches long, and I've made an indentation in the cardboard at the one inch mark. And because this is going to be the bottom of our tassel, I'm going to put my yarn down here, and then I'm just gonna wrap. And you just keep wrapping until you have your tassel the consistency that you like. That looks like a nice, thick tassel to me. 
move this over to this area here so you can see I have a little bit of space on this side and on this side I'm going to take a piece of my yarn insert that around the area here just like that and then I'm going to tie this very tightly and now I have another piece that's about 24 inches long and put that thread at the top now I'm going to tie it very tightly at the top up here and we're going to cut down here and take this off the top and then we have our cute little tassel I forgot to film me putting this bead this little pearl on here we are going to glue this between our painted pieces I'm going to use my quick grip and just coat the back of this really well then I'm going to take my tassel and lay that in take my bondo spreader and press that into that glue I coat that with glue and lay my other piece on top. I'm just going to press and hold until that sets. So now I'm going to cut out my pink hydrangea and I'm going to decoupage it right here. Roll this up, apply a thin layer of the Mod Podge and tap it down. So I want to get it all into that circular area there. And then I'm going to roll it up from this side and do the same thing. And then come back over with another coat to seal that all in. So these have been drying for a couple of hours. In the interest of time for this video, I'm going to go ahead and get these painted. I'm going to be painting my butterfly in the Rust-Oleum Linen White, and I'm going to paint the outside of my frames here in the Folk Art Inca Gold. And I'm using a brush with a little bit of a rounded and pointed tip just to be able to get into all the details of that clay mold. And isn't that just so pretty? I like this gold because it is very soft and it almost provides like a translucent quality to the clay as well. Now we're going to add some color to our butterfly, but first I'm going to put a little bit of clear wax on there. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my clear wax. I'll be using the Craft Smart Pink Bliss to add a little bit to my wax so that way I create a pink colored wax. And I'm dipping in, working into all the details of my butterfly. And then we're going to come back with a rag and gently wipe away. So we reveal some of that white, but then we leave the pink in the recesses of our butterfly wing. And I'm going to come in with some gold paint on a small brush and I'm going to do the antenna. I'm going to take my brush and rub most of that gold paint off and just lightly go over just to give a little bit of shimmer to the butterfly. It's very subtle, but when it catches the light, it looks really pretty. And now I'm going to come back in on my hydrangea just in the center of the flower and just lightly dab on a little bit of that gold paint just so when the light catches it, we get a little bit of shimmer on it as well. We're going to also put another bead at the top here, just as we did at the bottom. I have taken some scrapbooking paper. I traced my butterfly and I'm going to have that on the back of my butterfly. And I am not going to glue the antenna. I'm just going to glue along the body of the butterfly right here. So I'll take my tight bond and I'm going to use my brush to smooth that around. I'm going to put a little bit on the back of my butterfly as well. And then we're just going to press that into place. And I'm not going to press too hard because my butterfly is still just a little damp. Now we just have to put some lace on here and we are finished with our project. So I like the pom-pom trim. I think that's going to be really cute on the edges here. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my hot glue gun and glue that down. So that's going to cover those edges and also look really cute on the front as well. So 
and there we go I just love this I think it turned out so pretty and they look really cute on a door or a drawer knob you can hang them from a tiered tray they're just so pretty I used this right here from the classic elements design mold to make these along the board so now we're just going to give a little bit of age to this board using our clear wax and our antiquing wax and so I'm going to coat the whole board with the clear wax. Wipe down the excess. I'm going to come back with just a small amount of the dark wax, wiping almost all of that off of my brush and work that into all of those details. And also on the corners and the top and the edges here. And I work in small sections because this dark wax doesn't take long to set up. And start wiping off the excess. And now I'm going to go back over it with some clear wax because I want a softer look here. So then when I wipe it back again, it removes even more of that dark wax. And I like that much better. Take more dark wax and just very gently rub it across my board. Wipe that back. What that does is add some interest to our board. Turn it around and do the same thing here. When we get our frames on the board like that, how gorgeous is that going to be? So I'm going to be decoupaging parts of this beautiful napkin to the inside of our frame here. Because this is several ply, you do want to go ahead and take your napkin apart before you begin decoupaging. And I picked these up at Tuesday morning last year and I just think they're so pretty. I can see my frame through the napkin here and I'm just going to play around with the placement until it looks good to me. And I like how that looks. So I'm going to take my fingernail and just go all around the inside of my frame here and that's going to give me a cut line. Kind of hard to see but there's a little depression there and I'm just going to cut that out. And I like how that looks so I'm going to go ahead and decoupage this down. I love the way that looks. I think those both turned out so pretty. I'm going to take my tight bond and we're going to apply these to our board. So I'm going to lightly begin to press it down. Don't touch it if your Mod Podge isn't dry. I think that turned out so pretty. I really like that. Now to get a similar look without using molds, you could pick up small picture frames from the Dollar Tree, but we are going to use a printable. And I'm going to cut these out just like I have with all of the others and cut as close to the image as possible. It's going to look like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put these little architectural details down first using our Mod Podge. I cut the middle out of the frame as well. So I'm just going to take my pencil, trace the inside. But when I cut it out, I'm actually going to cut it just a little bit larger than my marking. I'm going to very carefully erase my pencil lines. So we're going to go ahead and put this down with our Mod Podge. And now I can center this up over the top of that. And we'll put that down. So it's not exactly the same, but you can get a similar look using some beautiful images from the Graphics Fairy. From my personal organizational style, I have to have everything out where I can see it. I like to use glass and I have shelving that is open. For some people, that would drive them absolutely bonkers. I suggest the YouTube channel Clutterbug. She has so many useful organizational tips and it's based on your personal organizational style. 
you can use anything that speaks to you. I like pink because it's pretty and it's also a very shabby chic inspired color. And then I like using these containers because these were my mother's. In here I have a lot of those paper flowers that I like to use in my crafting and that just keeps them organized and it keeps them from getting squished in a box. This container here has oodles and oodles of pom-pom trim. For this jar, I have wrapped my laces around giant craft sticks. It makes a beautiful display and it's just as simple as wrapping those laces around that stick and securing it in place with a straight pin. I also like using mason jars of various sizes. These large ones are perfect for storing all of those wood beads that you use for garlands and whatnot. The smaller mason jars, I just took some pretty scrapbooking paper just to make that an even prettier storage solution for some smaller beads and some buttons. You guys were really, really interested in these when I've showed these in a couple of videos. So let me show you what they are. They're actually straw inserts. You can get these off of Amazon. So instead of using the straw, I strung my smaller pom-pom trim where the straw would normally go and just use that and pull that out as I need it. This is also a wide mouth jar with a straw insert, but I have several smaller of the ribbon and lace spools and I just thread it all through the top and pull that out as I need as well. Another mason jar insert that I like to use is called a flower frog and you can get those from Amazon as well. And they look like this and how they're supposed to be used is when you have them on top of your mason jar, you stick your floral arrangement in there and it helps your flowers to stand up. But what I like to do is just pull out a couple of different ribbons that I have that aren't on a spool and I just stuff them in my jar, pull the tops out, and then I can use them as I go along. And I've done the same thing with this trim here as well. And then for some of my larger laces, I have this box here and I have my lace wrapped around these lace cards. And they are just wood cutouts that were painted white. Some beautiful paper has been decoupaged onto those. So then I can just wrap my laces around and tuck them in here. And that also offers a beautiful storage solution as well. So I hope you enjoyed getting a closer look at some of my storage solutions. So now let's take a closer look at our completed projects.
I hope you enjoyed today's projects and I thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until next week, my sweet friends, be blessed.